This car here is going to be a big block modified, and there's a way that you can tell that it's going to be a big block modified, and we'll explain that a little bit. I'll tell you what I know, and then Ronnie Davis is going to get a little bit more specific with us. Because regular, like a small block, okay, you can see we've got an oil pan down here. There's a baffles in the oil pan that try to keep the oil balanced so it doesn't slosh over to one side. That was a problem back in the day because you would actually starve the left side of the motor from oil because the momentum, you know, throwing it into the corner, the oil goes that way. But the big blocks have a different system. They call it a dry sump. These are oil lines here that run down the side. You can see them right there. And there is the oil cooler. That's with the red on the bottom. Ronnie Davis is here. He's gonna tell us what that is. Um, so Ronnie, this is a dry sump system. So yeah, unlike the small block that you said, it's not, your oil's not gonna be sitting in your uh, oil pan of the race car engine. It's gonna be in this tank here. Um, this here, what you see is just a, a heating pad, um, just to, oh, really? on a cold night. Yep, on a cold nights you can plug that in and you know heat that tank up. So, a lot of the oil stored back here, and obviously you can see these lines, circulating lines, return line. Those are going to go up to the engine, to the uh, pump, and basically it just circulates as the car is running. Mm -hmm. um, so if you were to change the oil in your big block car, there's actually a drain under here. A drain plug, you pull that. Just and like a lot of pan yep, on your street car, yep, right? And then all the oil is going to come out back here. Mm -hmm. The only difference is with these is you'll see, like you said, a lot of guys will take a drill with uh, a belt on the end of it and they'll cycle that pump. So then when they do that, this oil is going to circulate through here and then come back out and you know your residual is going to come out of this tank. Right. Um, same thing goes for when you're filling it. Uh, oh, really? You'll fill this tank. Yep. You'll take your drill up front. You'll spin the uh, the pump over till you see you know pressure come through your gauge. Yeah, you just want to see the gauge yep, move pretty much. Yep. Is about it, right? So okay. it's a it's a little bit different than as you know pulling the plug on the pan and then you know filling it just straight through the engine like you would on the small block. Right? And which line is which? Which is the return line? Uh, the return, and then this one would be the supply. Gotcha. Okay. Now, how much oil is in there? Right now, there's none. But <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> had to be that way. I had to yeah. be a smart Alex. So. <laughs> Um, no, about seven, eight is where we are, we fill it, and then you obviously um, you're going to cycle it through, and just uh, whatever it doesn't want, it's going to spill out because there's an overflow in there. Okay. So there's a tube that actually goes up, and it'll it'll drain out whatever is you know, okay. overfilled. Okay. And how much oil goes in? Because that pan that you have on your 358 is a lot bigger than like on my 602 crate engine. How much oil goes in there? About the same. About yeah. the same. So I fill that up with yep, seven, seven, eight quarts. Okay. Now, when you talk about spinning the oil to get it going through first before you start it, do you do that every time? Um, when you go to start the engine, a lot of guys will, what you should, is you'll roll the engine over with the starter without the ignition on or the main power ignition on. Okay. And then once you build oil pressure... Yeah, because that's just turning it and the plugs don't have anything to yeah, give them power, yeah, right? Okay. Anything, so the, the, the engine won't fire. So once you get oil pressure, then you hear them stop, spin it over, flick the ignition switch, and then they'll fire the engine. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that because I always hear guys that I'm like, why do they never start the first time? Mm -hmm. They're not trying to start it no, the no. first time. They're just trying to turn it over yeah, and get the oil. oil pressure, yeah. Interesting. So that's one thing I didn't know right there. So, okay. Yeah. All right. So that's how they work, guys. And, of course, some of the actual big small blocks do have some systems, too, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, I believe a lot of those guys. I'm not familiar with them, but I believe, you know, those guys that may run the Short Track Super Series will have those. Okay. I'm going to show you again. So there's the tank. Fill it at the top. He told you about that at the bottom. The heater's right there. That's the red part. So we'll follow the lines back this time so you can see. Those are the lines, and he'll actually run those lines into the engine when he gets it in there. And of course, that's your return and the other line for the radiator also. Yeah, so. yeah. and those two, those are our cooler lines for the oils. Oh, those? That, yep, that's up in front of the radiator. Which ones are we looking at now? These ones right here. These those are radiators. cooler. Okay, yeah, they're so not. If you okay. go up front to the radiator, uh -huh. that's where the cooler is. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yep. I see it down there at the bottom. Yep. Right there it is, right yep. there, guys. See it? Underneath. I'll see if I can get my hand down in there or not. But look, right. Let's yeah, see, can you get there, Ronnie? Yeah, so it's going to, well, yeah. let me move this out of the way. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that might make things a little bit easier, so. Yeah, so that's the cooler down there on the bottom here. Mm-hmm, okay. And these are for the radiator, correct? These two right here, right? These ones? Yes. Yes, yep. yep. That's so, yeah. If, uh, you see a lot of guys with, like, a hothead um, plugged into the race car before the night starts. Um, 
that's what they're plugging into, and that's circulating uh, hot water through the system. So when we fire it up, we're already at that. Well, what's the temperature we want to be? At 180, 190? Uh, yeah, we like to be at least 180, mm -hmm. 160, 180 before going on the track. Okay, so we don't have to sit there, start it, and wait yeah. for it to warm up anymore. Yeah, the temperature is going to be a little bit different than it reads on the gauge, but not okay. a lot. And the guys who have that piece they put in to keep the heat in, um, they're not doing that, or they wouldn't no, have to do so, that, yeah, right? No, still do that. Funny story with my small block. That's a, for another time, but okay. <laughs> yeah. There is a lot of guys you'll see put a panel in front of that radiator, and yeah, it'll, right there, it'll slide right in there. It'll yep. close that radiator off, and it'll it'll heat the engine a lot faster than say these would. Oh, it will. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, because we're not getting any air to the radiator yeah. at all. So you the, can also so the... overheat the engine too. So. Yeah, I had one guy who left it in there for his practice session, yeah. and that did not go well. No. So that one ended up making a trip back to the engine yeah, builder yeah, for some yeah, new bearings yeah, we, uh, at that point. So, And what do we run? Do we run water? Do we run um, yeah, um, water. antifreeze? A little bit of both? For this, you know, going to Volusia, because it's obviously cold when we're leaving, uh, this True. had antifreeze in it to get down there. Okay. Um, but, you know, regular summer nights, they got straight water in them. Uh, okay. And you could put... Uh, the cooling additive in there too to help a little bit. Okay. And what are these two lines that are coming out from the firewall? Those are power steering lines. Oh, that's power steering. And same thing, return and, yeah. and okay. Yeah. All right. So we hope you guys learned something on this. Now you know what some systems are. So next time you hear that big block and they turn it over and it doesn't fire right away, you don't have to sit there and go, why didn't it do that? Because that's what they wanted it to do. Yep. Ronnie, I appreciate your time, man. Good job. Yep. Thank you.